going on, everybody? This is the Growing Pains Podcast. We're back today at Fresh Powder with Jay Nasty. What's going on, uh, everyone? He was nice enough to let us come by. We, we set up shop, and we're going to ask him the same things we ask everybody. You know, originally where he grew up, get his outlooks on some things. Uh, like I said, he does own this shop here. Uh, so we're going to get into things. Z rode dirt bikes with him, so yeah. he got some questions that, that he's going to ask him. But uh, just, just off the, the get-go here, I mean, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Upper Darby Township, a couple of different towns in between in that area um, throughout elementary school, high school, all the way into my 20s. Okay. You had like the same friend group and everything like that? Uh, or kind of- I got, so I changed elementary schools. I, I, was, I grew up in Lansdowne and I had a few friends from the school I went to till fourth grade that I lost touch with when my, my family kind of split up. Okay. I moved into a different town switched schools and uh i met all new friends so i mean a lot of the people that i met in fourth fifth grade i got a few close ones that are still with me today yeah that yeah. seems like the same like we we talked about yeah. it a couple of times too it's just like you have like those close-knit friends that you grew no, up with that are still your close-knit friends even like like i have friends that went to, to went away to college and it's like we're still friends but then there's those ones that like i remember them but I yeah, a lot of people. Years. A lot of people come and go. Yeah, and I went to a big high school. I went to Upper Darby High School. At the time, I think it was like top two or three for population in the country. Okay, oh, wow. so we had like the most diverse school. Um, you got to see a lot then too. A lot I mean, of people did. that I didn't even know, but yeah, I know a ton of people just from the size of the school. But, okay, uh, and but, like in your in your childhood, like middle school, high school, we'll say like, what were you? Uh, what were you doing back then? Like, were you always into cars, dirt bikes, that kind of thing? Or were you, like, playing sports? I always I always had a love for the bikes and the cars because my mom and my dad used to take me to X Games before it, like, popped okay. off crazy, cool. like, yeah, in Philly. Sweet. My mom took me to FDR Skate Park, like, every weekend as a kid. That's fine. But, uh, you know, other people in my family kind of pushed the sports thing on me. So, yeah. like, I played baseball, uh, soccer, basketball, all throughout, like, elementary school. And, like, they kind of pushed the baseball thing on me up through, like, middle school and high school, but... You never really had, like, a love for it. That was nah, like, like, uh, like, as a kid, like, I was really a skater. Like, I went to skate parks every weekend. I skated with my friends on the street every weekend. Okay. All right. the way, all the way until I was able to have my own money for a bike and a car. Okay. Like, some you still skateboard or no? You're done? I, st- I still get down, like, once in a while. We, <laughs> whip, we whip it out, or, out here sometimes, but I haven't been to the actual skate park or, like, skating out like for a day in a yeah, long time i grew up there was a there was a skate park around me and i was just i was never good you know what i mean i do like an ollie that was about it yeah. i hit the rollerblades and be going all around but this, the the skateboard wasn't uh wasn't much for me um so the cars and the bikes were kind of always always what you wanted to get into that was like kind of the goal because you know as a kid some of my friends had little pocket rockets yeah. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and we used to get busy on them we get in a little trouble but you can't do much as a kid depending on what your parents can do for you. So for sure, like, you're absolutely right. To be able to get, like, some shoes and a skateboard, that was, like, the thing. All my friends were skaters, and, like, yeah, we were trying to get sponsored, going to competitions, just doing all that. Shooting videos, like Windows Movie Maker. Yeah. Like fourth grade, like, got our hands on a video camera. That's what we used to do with music videos back when I, when I made music when I was growing up. We would do uh, the Windows Movie Maker. We'd, we'd be <laughs> mixing it all up in there yeah. with all the effects and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That, was, that was the original shit. Yeah. So you, uh, you said Upper Darby High School is where you went to? Yeah, that's where I went to high okay. school. Yep. Did, you, um, did you end up going to college? So that was, like, another thing that some people in my family tried to kind of push on me. Yeah. I, I went... It was like a total of maybe three years, okay. but uh, on like I was trying to shoot videos at the time. That okay. was that was like my main like goal. Yeah. But I was kind of going to school because it was kind of pushed on me, and I changed up the uh, like the major like two different times. And then crazy thing is, I'm like one cl- like I got two more credits to get whatever that degree was. Yeah, like, uh, I think it close. was like a lot not, of people, not like the a lot of it was like the close. associates degree. Yeah. It was like. Yeah. It started off on the basic one. I don't even remember what they're called, but it's like a, it's just like a general. Oh, oh yeah, like the general classes. Yeah, and, and then it's I. It's not oh even what you're interested in. And I wasn't in. into anything, so like, I kind of just went into some biology shit just to like, go for something, and then like, the last class was some like calculus shit, and like. 
Yeah. I was so far gone <laughs> in my mind. In, in like, real life. I was so far gone in my mind. I just kind of just was like, I'm going to do what I need to do. Like, I was trying to shoot videos of, like, reckless shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know. So you started shooting videos, like, in college, or you did that high school and all throughout? Well, I started shooting videos in, like, probably fourth or fifth grade when I had the Windows Movie Maker. Yeah. And what were you and doing the, then? Like, skateboarding? That was all and, skateboarding and, okay. like, reckless, like, skits and shit. Yeah. And then, uh, huh? kind of, yeah. <laughs> and, like, in high school... We had a, we had a lot of issues in the family, and uh, I ended up living at, at like my best friend's house. His name's Justin. Him and his brother Dylan. Okay. And his parents, they're like parents to me, and uh, his dad's just a badass, and like his uncle, they're just into that shit. Like yeah. cars, bikes, always. He always had dirt bikes, running from the cops, his kids, like, dad doing burnouts in the fucking Mustang. <laughs> so it was, and like, a big influence on you. Yeah, it was an influence. do some burnouts after the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. And it was, like, <laughs> it was, like, some shit that, like, I couldn't really ever have for myself until that age, yeah, you know? Yeah, until, and then you go to college, and it's, like, you still can't really, you can't do, you can't have your own thing, really, when you're in college, because you do have, like, right. such a big commitment. Like, I went to college for... I went for a year and I got kicked out. Same thing. Like, I just didn't want to go to class. I wasn't interested in any of it. Like, I also had a part-time job, so I was getting money. And it's like, once you get, like, that little bit of money, it's like, yeah. why am I even going That's to school? Do, like, right? I want to get the and money. If, if your head ain't in it and if you're not going for something that you need that, like, cert- certification right, for. Like a lawyer, a doctor. Yeah, and I, I'm like not that. knocking that. on. If yeah. anybody needs to do it, do it. Yeah. But for me, like, my path kind of changed and I just kind of went with my gut on that one. Yeah. yeah, and you knew what, like, your passion was. So, I mean, yeah. that's always good to, like, at least, like... Uh, most people go to college and they don't really know even what they want to do. Right. Like you were and in that's, college, knew what you wanted to do, and it wasn't right. what you were doing. Right. right. Yeah. So. I was out here picking like random. What I forget what it was, but it was like general sh- classes. Oh yeah. And I'm yeah. Like, like when you first go in, you got to do. I'm all like the, I don't know. And then classes. and then like you know my grandpa was trying to tell me I got to pick something. I'm like fuck. I guess I'll pick this. Like I'm actually interested in like animals and like yeah, just yeah. life yeah. in general. So like that's cool and all, but. Nothing you're doing at first is related to what you picked. Right. When That's when you're thing, when like, you're just like in class drawing shit on your notebook and like you don't show up for a week, like you just get to the point where it's like fuck it, like yeah. you know. Yeah. I think a lot of people get to that point, and like I said, luckily you had like a passion, kind of knew which route you wanted to take. So now you go to college, uh, you get out of college. What was like your first job after that? First job, like, ever or after college? I'd say I'm ever after college, wherever so, you want to so, start. So pretty much, like, from probably 17 to, like, 22, Okay. I was I was just in and out of different restaurants. Outback Steakhouse, Red Lobster, Miller's Ale House, fucking... Um, That's good preparation. Well, Famous like, days. what did you do there? I started off as, like, a busboy because I was too young to be a server. Right. Okay. So then I, like, quit my one job because I because they were hiring my boys as servers down at Red Lobster. I quit mm-hmm. Outback for Red Lobster, bounced all around, and then ended up back at Outback by the okay. time I was in college. Yeah. I'm in fucking college shooting videos of, like, Justin on his bikes and shit. Yeah. And I'm out here, like, studying homework in the parking lot in my car before work watching like Mr. Business film and the shit that I'm trying to film. Yeah. Right, right. And like, uh, you knew what you wanted to do and you're just Yeah, like, it was just kind of like do it. you knew you could do it too. Yeah, and I was just young at the time so it, it takes a while for you to get that little bit of fuck it in you. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. You gotta, for sure. Yeah, and that's the thing like uh, so many people are too scared to like take that step. Like yeah. like Z always calls it like breaking out of that yeah. shell. Like you're always yeah, you break your shell then shell. saying, you know, you got to go to college, you got to do yeah. this, you got to work this job, but it's like when you say fuck it and you get out like that's when really you can enjoy your life. Yeah. And like, when you have a passion for something, like, not only are you gonna work harder for it, but normally most people are better at it too. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. when you're recording sure. like the for videos sure. and stuff like that, like, it's something you actually care about. Yeah. So it's something you're gonna be better at yeah. than somebody I'm, that's just doing I'm, it because they have to. I'm literally 20 years old editing a video from 10 at night to 6 in the morning smoking fucking dabs all night yeah. <laughs> going to class at 10 a.m. not giving a shit and like right. you know so when when you started shooting the videos like were you what type of views and stuff like that were you getting at first and then towards like the end of you doing the videos and things like that 
So like how quick did that happen? Because I did see like, you had a lot of views on, on a bunch of things. Yeah, like obviously as a kid and whatnot, it was just mostly people from school or people right. that were friends watching your stuff. I started the Third Eye Visions channel with my brother, fucking uh, Omar. He, he, he goes by the name of OS or Omar Sungar. Okay. Uh, he's a musician, one of the most talented people I know. But I started the uh, channel with him. Uh, he actually did the, he's featured a Meek song, right? He did it. So he kind of, yeah, it, yeah, sort of. <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. We, we finessed that together, but that was a dope song. But, um, yeah, I started it with him. We, were, we, were, we had the series called Disobey. That was my series in college. Like, it was just, we were trying to do whatever we wanted. We were trying to vlog before vlogging was, like, a name. Like, right. I think Wiz Khalifa was doing... Like the daily, daily, yeah, what was it, day to day or something? Yeah, like that, and right? it wasn't even called vlogging yet. Like, so it was just, yeah, promoting his music, promoting reckless shit, and uh, so you were just getting just, those views, like at first, like you said, like from people yeah, you like, knew, and then, like, I mean, at some point, it seems like, like, because I went on and I checked the channel, like, at some point, it took off. Do you remember so, what, what point that was? This there is, had to be this, some reckless shit that you this, did that this made is, it pop. This is like right at the time where I'm. I'm already, I'm already like, it's fuck school, but my grandpa still thinks I'm going to go finish that shit eventually. Yeah. yeah. I'm fucking, I'm, uh, oh, I just completely blanked out. <laughs> With the views, when the views yeah, so went the from views. So I'm at Outback, I'm at Outback Steakhouse working. Like, it was already kind of fuck college. I'm there. My boy, I'm already on the last strand of, like, fuck this. At this yeah. point, I'm, like, powder coating at someone else's shop. Like, okay. I'm getting into the bikes. I own dirt bikes at this point. Yeah. I'm, I'm filming in the street on my dirt bike, all that. And uh, my man fucking Bishu, who, who I started Fresh Powder with, my fucking, that's another one of my brothers right there. Um, Bishu hits me up. He's like, yo, he's like, fuck this shit. They're going to MLK. This is this is 2015. This was the second the MLK ride out. Yeah, I think that they the had. I want to say the first one was 14, but this was MLK 2015. I'm buying camera equipment. I'm fucking trying to film <coughs> shit, and he's like, "Bro, like you gotta go. Like you gotta go." Yeah. And he was nice on the bikes. Like before, people yeah, were really was. nice. He was one of like the OGs. Yes, he was. He was and, uh, it. and yeah, and fucking, he's like, "Yo, you gotta go." So. Mind you, at this point, I'm I'm paying people like a hundred dollars to to work my shift because yeah. this is how often I'm taking off work because I just don't give a fuck. Yeah, right. and you knew what you wanted to do. And uh, I paid some people to work my shit, and I went that weekend to MLK 2015. I went down there with Bishu and a couple guys, and uh, I met a lot of people there. I did a video that popped off. Last, it probably got I don't know like. 300,000. I don't really yeah. keep up Almost with that. Million, I don't right? really check on it, but yeah. that was like the video that really popped my shit off. Like, Third Eye Visions was like on the map. Because at that time, yeah. at that yeah. time, the only people doing bike light videos was me and Mr. Business. Yeah. And I mean, there's like a couple other OGs, don't get me wrong, but like currently in the scene on the bikes in the pack yes. all the time, that was yep. what it was kind of. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. So I remember you, when I first got into like riding and stuff I did. I think I went to Rail Day one year and uh I remember I seen Mr. Business fly by me with the scooter and I'm like, Oh, I gotta get up there and get on the video because yeah. I know I'm gonna be on YouTube, you know. Yep. So Mr. when your business is legendary. When you're yes, recording those when you're like recording the the ride outs and things like that, like are you on a bike or are you on a banshee? Like what are you riding when you're so when you're filming? It started off as a... Uh, Bishu's bike in 2015, it broke down in Miami. Okay. So before his bike broke down, they were, like, basically kind of passing me around on different people's bikes, and yeah. I didn't really have anything solidified. But Bishu's bike broke down, and we rented a fucking Ferrari scooter. Okay. So <laughs> he rocked out for me for the cause and drove me on the Ferrari scooter for that whole ride out. Okay. And uh, by the next year, by 2016... I had I had quit my job, was completely just on my own, and uh, by that time I had a, a, a Honda Grom when they first came out, right okay. out of the dealership. Cause cause 2015, I linked up with Prince and some people from One Way, and and we all 
met each other in Miami, but we were all like from Philly, so we were all kind of rocking together. Yeah. That's how I met them. And uh, Prince, who's the one that started One Way, okay. he, he was on the high on the ground that year. And, and that's that, what, is and that, that what made you want to get yep. one? I was like, yo, that's the perfect bike because I could learn how to wheelie on it. It's not too powerful. It's small, but I could also maneuver in the pack with it. Yeah. And I'm already knowing that I can drive the Grom and hold the camera in my other hand and get yeah. these shots. That's right. crazy. So, that's a, I feel so like that's, that's a dangerous yeah, shit. Yeah, so it crazy, turned man. into that. Yeah. And then as I, as I became from filming, I obviously wanted to ride more. Yeah. So. It, it turned into me just riding my own bike and yeah. pulling the camera out of school bag when I wanted to. Okay. So I'll just ride when I want, pull the camera out when I want. And Dude, I did a man. lot of videos, yeah. a lot yeah. of videos yeah. that yeah. way, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen, like, a lot of the stuff on, on YouTube and stuff like that definitely had, like, some crazy views. I've yeah. seen it, I was like, yeah. oh, shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at this point, like, when does, when does Fresh Powder come into the mix? Like, when did you start, start this? Fresh Powder came into the mix... In 2016. Okay. About. So about. Probably it was like two two months after my mom passed away. Okay. So. So right around that time I was really um, just on some reckless shit, and I was doing a lot of a lot of stuff in the streets, kind of like. Not really going in the best direction, I yeah, guess you could say. Like, a lot of we, had we a actually good... talked about this on the other episode is, uh, with, with Joey. is just like, because his mom, his mom passed away when he was 13, he had said. Um, but, like, there's a lot of ways people, different people take it. Yeah, like, yeah you know, for sure, for sure. Some people take it and, like, you know, it's, it's a big emotional thing that happens to you. So it's easy to go down, like, a bad path. And then right. some people, like, use it as, like, Oh, now I want to like prove something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously, like, like what you're, I think you're going towards saying is like you kind of started doing some reckless shit, and then you know at some point you start this. Like this is something that she would be yeah, proud of. Right. This well, place yeah, is sweet. and that and that's the thing. Like I was reckless. My mom was the, always the one that was on top of me for being so reckless, cause like my grandparents could only really see a certain side of me, cause like they're such good people. But, yeah, like my parents always accepted me for who I was and she was always on my ass about being reckless and doing reckless shit filming yeah. crazy videos doing dangerous shit on the bikes doing the shit that I was doing trying to get some money and like I said I always had a good head on my shoulders and I always kept it morally correct and yeah. I never did anything that like I'm ashamed of but yeah. I was I was just focused on the on the money and on the wrong things yeah for sure and my mom passed away. A month later, I go on vacation with my grandparents. Come home, doors wide open, the lights are on, windows are smashed, the house is ransacked. Oh, oh my God. Everything is gone. Before I went on vacation, something just told me, like, I don't know if it was her talking to me, like, however it was, but something just told me, like, that money can't be there. So I moved the money. They got everything except for ten thousand dollars. I had just saved up ten grand in hunters. And uh they got everything but that. So I was really down bad. Like I had already fucked up Outback Steakhouse because they were like my go-to. Like I had so much history there. I was yeah. already over the restaurant shit. I had just lost damn near everything. I'm selling Third Eye Visions t-shirts for like twenty dollars, yeah. trying to just make a flip. Right. Just to get some money. That's crazy. And, and, then, I'm, and I'm powder coating at someone else's shop who just don't give a, I'm not going to say his name, but just didn't give a fuck about what he was doing and was yeah. putting out a very bad reputation. Shitty so work. Yeah. Not even shitty work, just bad reputation. Gotcha. And um, when you're there, too, that, like, seeps onto you, too, when you're working for somebody yeah. that is, is, has that bad I, reputation. It's like, yeah. oh, you were, you were there with so-and-so. Yeah. Like, it's not a good look for you they then, They say either. you are what you hang around. Yep. You so, at exactly. the same time, like, yeah. you're kidding. <laughs> I like that. So, luckily enough, I had my man Bishu, and he, we were in it heavy together from the bikes. And, and then you started this. And, and uh... He, he, like, offered me, he's like, yo, like, let's start a shop. Like, you're, you're powder coating, like, let's do this shit. So we got the shop next door to this one in the same building. That was our original one, a small little unit. And uh, we split the shit, we split the bread 50-50. But, like, it was around 16 or 18 grand total. We split everything, the oven, 
the sandblaster, the powder coating booth. A lot of this shit still in here is his. Okay. But, but yeah, that's how this shit started. Yeah, that's crazy. And it was, and it was like a blessing in disguise because like somebody who was really close to me did me wrong. But I don't think if that happened, I wouldn't have had the shop and you I wouldn't have invested my position. last dollars into this. Yeah. And, uh, I would have gotten myself put in jail or killed doing the shit I was doing. So thank God I'm here now. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you need, like we talk about a lot too, is like sometimes you need like, like when that bad thing happens to you, it's like, damn, this sucks. This feels so bad. Like yeah. blah, 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 blah. But sometimes like the worst shit that happens to you could be the best it's shit a, that happens it's, to it's you. It's a lot of times it's a blessing in disguise. Exactly. Right? And you just got to think about it like in the moment, like, yeah, like your world could be crashing down, but. You don't know what guy got on the other side of this for you. Yeah. Um, so we were talking before this. Um, you said you have a daughter. I got a daughter. So what was your uh, like your work drive like after you had your daughter? Like, did it change? Were you always just grinding hard? I, or you think you I think been, you have an extra push just, now? Yeah, I've been going hard since I had to be up at like six in the morning for high school. Like, yeah. Uh, yep. Like even middle school, like kids had curfews and shit. And me and my boy Omar and Kenny and Justin, we're out till like 11, 12 at night. Yeah. You just always had that drive. It, like, yeah. I'm always just doing something and uh, trying to get something done. Like yeah. whether I was at it in the videos for days on end, hours on hours, like same thing with the shop. And uh, so th 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 things before the baby came into picture, I got comfortable at the shop having my own, schedule and my own mm -hmm. rules and like not having to listen to somebody or be on someone's time so there was a period of time where i, I kind of got in like the fuck around stage and was just drinking a lot bullshitting a lot and not really keeping my focus at the shop and uh there was it was getting kind of out of control yeah and when i had when my girlfriend got pregnant I kind of just kicked that shit. Yeah, it definitely gives you, like like I said before, too, like I have a son, he's nine months old. Like, I feel like I've always been the same way, like wake up early, work hard. Like, yeah. that's just been my MO since since high school. Yeah. But yeah. now it's just, like, for me, I just feel like there's, like, an even bigger weight on it. Like, you know what I mean? You kind of got something to prove it's, to, like, the next it's, generation. Yeah, and it's, you got to set an example, and you got to, uh, you got to be there for them. Like, yeah. You got to be the one. And, uh, yeah, it's a whole different drive. Cause uh, from when I found out my girl was pregnant, I started working out. I got a picture when she was pregnant. I was I was getting out of out of control there. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got the I got the bench upstairs. I got some weights. I go hard and uh, Just you know wake up wake up, wake up earlier. Healthy, you know like I mean? wake up earlier, having a kid like seven o'clock six o'clock seven o'clock on the weekends like a late morning for yeah. me. For yeah, yeah. Like, me yeah. too, man. Like yeah. five a.m. five a.m. is like. The latest I'm waking up during the week and 4 a.m. is is getting done most of the time. Yeah, right. that's that's like the mindset. Yeah, you're, you're putting it together. So you've had you've had this since you said 2016, right? I've had this since 2016. So yeah. now with that, like, has there been any? Because obviously you went through COVID, like you went through all that. Has there been any like hardships with the company just keeping it together? Or yeah, kinda... hell yeah, yeah. So so. You know, I was doing the powder coating full time for a while, and uh, after COVID, people really prioritized what they're paying their money on. Yeah, yeah. So food got expensive, gas got yes, expensive, it and uh, it's still getting expensive still somehow. Big. I don't yeah. understand yeah. that yeah. shit, but and uh, it's just like people aren't trying to pay a thousand dollars to get their bike or their car done up. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So I actually started detailing with one of my good friends, Josh. Okay. And, uh, he still got a lot of these machines here. We split all them, brought Josh up in the mix. My my man Bishu, he's still around. That's still my guy, but he's got a really good uh good job going for him. Okay. And he's been taking that serious for a while, and he's doing great. So, this is still his shop. He still got a key that he's always around. But yeah, as far as the powder coating goes, I'm more so kind of just doing my thing with that. Yeah. And, and uh, me and Josh detailed for a while, and that was cool, and that made us some money. But uh, held it, all it just together, it, it just I'm like sure. cleaning a car all day, yeah, every it's day. Not fun. Just, oh, I did that. That's how I started, I man. I, like I, fun, I, man. I'm in auto body now. Like I run a shop, but uh, like when I first like started working, I was detailing. My dad runs a detail shop still, and it's just like, man, doing that all day, like. 
Man, I don't even want to clean my own car now. You're right. You know what yeah, I, mean? like, I don't even want to so clean my car. Cleaning a car all day long, that can be that can be crazy. Yeah. Um, but that was fresh powder, for, uh, fresh detailing. Yeah. So yeah. you had both of them. Fresh powder. Fresh, fresh, yeah. fresh, yeah. fresh yeah. detailing yeah. and custom powder crazy, coating. The, the backdrop and, is great. Yeah, and we'll still detail a car if, if someone really needs it. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. It's just the, and the price got to be right. And if I ain't going to do it, if we ain't going to do it together, you already know I'm going to throw that job to my guy Josh when they come in. So, yeah. right. so what's, the, uh, what's the best part about owning your own shop? You kind of I know you said you had that guy that had a bad reputation and things like that. Obviously, you're building your reputation but what's the best thing about owning your own shop the best thing is is just being able to kind of have like an extension of my house to where i could have my items and like just be a place to be that's yeah. like considered mine yeah, yeah. Really i'm yours. not on anyone's time like i come here after work and work at night i take off work to work here when i get busy i come here in the mornings before work to work out like i'm, I'm just always here like this is yeah. where I get my mind right. It's like another like, space for you too. Like I've yeah. been talking about, like I'm building an office in my house right now. Like that's kind of just gonna be my space. Like it's sometimes when you're in a house, like with a significant other, it's hard to have that, especially with a kid. Yeah. Like yeah. it's yeah. hard yeah, to have your sure. own space. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a. You always gotta have something that makes you happy. Yeah, right. for and, sure. And for me to be able to have this place, like. Sometimes it, I, it's a struggle to get it done to keep it, but at the end of the day, I'm doing what I love. Like, yeah. yeah, and a lot of people can't say that they're doing what they love. Like a lot yeah. of even people that are making like 95 percent. A lot of people that, that are making a lot of money too. Like they're not doing what they love, and and at some point, like I do like a, a quote a lot of times, and a lot of them are about like money. Like money can't buy happiness. Like yeah. things like that, which. I don't know. I'm on the side of like you gotta have money. You know what I mean? To yeah, build you got the happiness, it. to have the freedom, like we talk yeah. about. But like money isn't everything. But when you're constantly stressing about money, yep. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It could ruin it's a lot something. of things yeah. too. And, yeah, it and uh, yeah, for sure. Like like money ain't everything, but you need money to get the shit that you need. That's mm -hmm. it. So yeah. I know you said you said something, which we we kind of asked the same question to all of the guests. Um, but you said like you were drinking and things like that at, yeah. at that one point. So what's like your overall outlook like on drugs, um, in the aspect of like, like people drink, people smoke, things like Honestly, that. Honestly, but I know a lot of people that like do a lot of worse things, like yeah, you know people that were addicted things, yeah. to drugs and things like that. What's your outlook on all of that? I think fuck drugs except for weed. I'm smoking weed as much as possible. <laughs> um, that seems like. So the thing is, like, we've had, like, a lot of people that are, you know, like, hardworking people that we know, yeah. like, and even, like, successful people that we speak to, pretty much everybody's outlook on drugs seems to be the same. Like, yeah. I don't think... I'm, I hope so, too. Like, that's like, the thing. Like, I don't think anybody's going to come on the show and say, like, drugs are great. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the yeah. thing yeah. is, like... And it's crazy because, like, there's so many people that are, like, just so fucked up in, like, that life of and living in that... But like yeah, nobody, nobody goes, nobody says I want to be a drug addict. No, you know what I mean. It's a but terrible it's, cycle, and the whole, nice. the whole entire country and the system, and it's all fucked. But it uh, fucked. you gotta make those choices for yourself. Yep. Yeah. I think personally, I don't mind drinking every so often, but yeah. but drinking, like my I. My dad's the coolest dude in the world, and he don't really lose his character when he drinks. But this motherfucker drinks every day. Yeah. Like, it, Damn, it can be it can yeah. be vodka, it can be Jack Daniels, like rum, whiskey, beer, Budweiser right. all the time. Beer, like, and well, he still gets it done. Yeah, right? yeah, like, but okay. at the same time, like, with me and my girl, like, alcohol has been a problem in our families before. So, like, yeah. we're kind of trying to break that cycle, and like. Yeah. Alcohol hasn't brought me anything good in my relationship or my new family that I'm creating. Right. And uh, yeah, so even even on the times like after I after I had the kid have have a drink on a celebration like on a time where you can where it's not a big deal. Yeah. Even if I'm having three twisted teas and I'm not getting lit, like if my stomach's not fucked up the next day, I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. for three days. Yeah. That one day turns into three days. It fucks you all up. Yeah. Right. And, that's what and, we talk about it a lot too. Is like drinking is. Like you said, like with like a celebration, like that's really the only time that I'm really trying to like drink. Like right. drinking feels different when it's a celebration. It's like yeah. when you save money 
and you buy like a nice ass dirt bike. Like, yeah. That shit feels different because yeah. you yeah. saved up for it. So feel like, good. if you're drinking for a celebration, like that's great. But like, if you're I'm, drinking for no reason. It's yeah, not working. I'm not one of the people that going out Thursday, Friday night, Saturday night, nah. like all them nights in a row. And it seems like you the same way. Yeah, yeah. Were you yeah. ever like in that cycle? Like while uh, you were doing like the videos and all the when I was doing when I was doing the videos, I was drinking a lot of henny and smoking a lot of weed. I never was really I never I was always like the kid that was scared in school of drugs, scared to try anything, scared to smoke weed. Yeah. I always just stuck to that. Yeah. I never ventured off and uh the alcohol, like partying, that's all cool and stuff, but then when you get a family and you got somewhere to be and someone people to take care of yeah you gotta you, do what you, gotta, you do. gotta do what you gotta do and and if you want to be the best you can be i've seen it happen with myself like i would come to the shop to detail a car and just be like fucking around drinking sometimes yeah and it's like that shit ain't getting done faster that shit's getting done longer yeah and then you you're looking you like a, you're looking like an job, idiot right? in front of someone smelling like you're drinking like yeah when you're supposed to be taking care of their shit, yeah. So it's, it's like it's not a it's not a good look. I feel like like I said, everybody that we talk to kind of agrees on the on the same uh, part of that. So hey, what is going on, everybody? It is Big Z over here at the Growing Pains Podcast, and I want to give a big shout out to our favorite sponsor, Dads for America. Dads for America is a clothing brand founded in 2023 that's here to give thanks to American dads since 1776. Dads for America donates 4% of every purchase to Folds of Honor, which is a charity known for giving back to families of our fallen troops. Here at Grown Pains Podcast, we believe that America is still the greatest country in the world and will continue to support any brand that feels the same way. God bless America. Let's get back to the show. That So when I was looking at the YouTube channel earlier, it seems like you haven't really uploaded anything like recently is that something that you want to do you can't do or or what's going on with the videos it's been very uh here and there since like 2019 and i always have a passion for shooting videos and i always keep my video equipment Mm -hmm. because that's something that's just kind of part of me for my life but um as far as taking it serious and all that like i've considered like vlogging but uh, a lot of like a lot of times I just don't see the genuineness. There's some people that are definitely genuine in their shit, but yeah. uh, I don't know. Like I live a pretty fascinating life, and the life at the shop is pretty funny. But uh, I was I was trying to really do my thing with that until the cops kind of shut me down on that. Okay. And, and what happened with that? Yeah. Was that you could talk on it or? Yeah, yeah, I could definitely talk about it. It's all done now. I just, I just owe the money for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but, it sucks. You gotta so, make the money somehow, right? So you know, 2019 at this point, I'm like heavy. Like, it's just like bikes are everything. I'm building them. I'm powder coating them. I'm riding them. I'm filming them. Yeah. How many bikes did did you have? I don't want to cut you off in the middle of that. But how many bikes did you have like at one point? Did you always have like one, or did you have like five, six, seven? I've bikes? had, I've probably had up to like over ten at one time, maybe. Yeah, Damn. Yeah. But, um, What's the your main, favorite bike? the main, the main thing about like when I had them all at one time was when I had, I had the KX80, the 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 CRF150R, both bust down, complete, fully powder coated, nice. and then I had I had the 2019. YZ125 and I had the 2019 YZ450 all at once with a couple other like XR80s and LT80s like little shit but yo like that was just it cause it's like I got a two stroke and a four stroke on each level like yeah, I got yeah. the big boy and I got the little boy on each one so uh-huh. it's like I'm picking what I wanna ride there you right. go. and it's either some bust down fresh shit or it's or it's some fucking fresh out the dealership right. that's yeah. why everything is and fresh which powder one was your favorite? My favorite bike out of all yeah. of them? Ever, the 125. The 125? Yeah. <laughs> that buck in a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have that bike That's still? What one. happened to that bike? I have it. Yeah. Or no, well, I don't have that one. I okay. sold that one. But you I, have the same bike. I had that bike, and um, I just got offered some money that I couldn't refuse for it. And this was after the cops shut me down. I kind of got, got rid of some stuff. Couple, 
a couple of things got stolen. Yeah. Well, one of them got stolen. Um, and what happened then with the cops? So I know you say you have all these bikes, you know, and like you said, you were doing reckless yeah, shit. Like, like what happened with, with the cops? So at this time, like, I'm just, I'm just filming, like, dude, I'm riding fucking, I'm Tuesday morning. Like, these videos are still on there. Like, I didn't even take them down because by the time that the, that the court shit came in the mail, they already had the evidence. Yeah. So it's like, how am I going to delete a post when it has a screenshot on their fucking thing? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm riding on Tuesday mornings. I'm riding on fucking... Anytime I can get, I'm picking up my boys and we're going to the city and we're riding and we're filming. Yeah. And uh, I come home fucking one day and I got fucking a stack of tickets in the mail. <laughs> I'm talking a stack of tickets. Like I had, there were, it was like four separate instances and everyone was the same exact charge. So I had the same, I had no registration, no insurance. Reckless driving, no glasses, no license, all that shit. And it was the same one on every ticket, but, like, different dates. And, like, these tickets are fucking descriptive as fuck. Like, <laughs> like, like, first of all, they made a... When we get to court, they got a fucking fifth-grade poster board with my pictures fucking glued to it. Like, they fucking did this shit after school or something. So, I'm... I'm um, the, the, I'm reading the ticket and it's like defendant was observed running a red light while standing on the seat while doing a wheelie on his dirt bike, yeah. and then and then like and they had everyone at at uh, it's like where I'm like charged at is like a block off a of traffic court like traffic court's on like 12th and Filbert and I'm on I'm on like 15th to 17th in Spring Garden like. Yeah. Like, literally, they got videos of me, like, riding past traffic who were doing this shit. And, and was it just you, like, in this? Like, nah, they got a lot of us. Nah, they got, got a lot of us. They got a lot of us, but all said and done, it, uh, it came down. To you? When I get to the end, yeah, it came down to me. Well, they got, they got a lot of people, but, you know, you go to court and you got to go. Like, I was in there, like, at least 12 times. Damn. Like, I had to go for every one, and, like, I paid this dumbass lawyer fucking over $2,500. He didn't do shit. These, these people, these cops hired a, uh, he was, he was a certified, uh, FBI agent certified in facial recognition. He wasn't, like, currently an FBI re- yeah, agent, but right. he was a facial recognition guy in the FBI. So they hired this dude to get all these fucking people on their dirt bikes. And we get to court, and, like, they are just tearing me up. Like, they're, they're tearing me up. Like, they got, they got the picture of me at the dealership buying the bike with the fucking blue phone posits on. Yeah. <laughs> they got me on the unique shoes. That was their whole fucking thing was the unique shoes. That's crazy. And uh, yeah. and they, and they fucking wild. get me, and, like, they got this dude. My lawyer's not doing shit. I'm like, yo, can I talk? They're trying to tell me off this blurry-ass video of me on my seat. I got a fucking helmet and a face mask on, and all you could see is this. Yeah. yeah. Two eyes and a half a nose. And this, an officer quick is in there telling me. He's telling me. This is you. I identified you by the bridge of your nose. That's crazy. I literally, I stopped my lawyer. I'm like, can I please talk? I'm like, so you're telling me on a blurry picture from a screenshot of a video zoomed in 10 times, you're, you identify me by this? That's crazy. Yeah, though, and that was it. Yeah. And that's how they came down. Yeah, like that. $3,200 fine. Lost my license. They were trying to take it for three years. All said and done, they took it. I lost it for six months. Okay. They, I'm not going to lie, like, towards the end, they kind of looked out because, like, a lot of people were going, and they were all, like, not getting fucked, and they were just going hard as shit on me. Yeah. And, uh... They had to make you as a... Like, uh, I, was, I was in court, like, I'm in court, like, shaking hands with M. Boogie, like, oh, you're here, too? Yeah. yeah I'm yeah, like... Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. They got a bunch of us, and then they were salty because my man Bishu got some charges, and he fucking schooled these dickheads. And, uh, yeah, they were trying to tell him 
they were trying to identify him by his helmet. And he was like, basically like, just because I was, he, he went there with his mom. No lawyer, nothing. Schooled the shit out of him. Walked out. Fucking scot free. Damn. Yes, sir. So and it, don't don't and it, hire a lawyer. No, like that, yeah, because like they don't do shit really, and it's no, like they don't, they it's do. like you can't say that this is my. You can't say I own this because I wore it in a picture. Yeah. yeah. And the cop was salty. At the end, at the very end, it was COVID at this point. So okay. like, they had they took it from like the one courtroom to this other courtroom, and normally like they would take you in a room with the judge. It would be just the judge, the DA, and then your lawyer and you. Because they'll call, you're in the waiting room kind of, and they just call you into these rooms like one by one. Mm-hmm. And they're always trying to like give you a deal. They got a picture of me fucking talking shit on Instagram, talking <laughs> about I'm not taking a deal. Like yeah. they were like, fuck this kid. And, uh, yeah. Did that it, affect it, like the it, videos too? Like when all that happened? Yeah, it affected everything because I couldn't post. I got videos that I still didn't post because people are in them and I'm in them. And, uh, and they were about to be released, and I still haven't released them because, like, what's the point? Yeah. Now, if you release them videos, do you think you could get more charges or no, that's done with? I think they're done with me because I haven't really been seen yeah. since, like, 2019. I don't yeah. even really ride. And if you see me riding, you really know I'd probably be at a lot. And I don't even care if that's corny. Yeah. Because I got a kid, so I'm going to go ride my bike for a few hours and then go have dinner with the family. Yeah, I remember on the way here, Z was telling me that because uh, we went to New York, uh, like, two months ago. And he said he went to like a ride out, yeah, I went to uh, New York. and they all met, I think you all met up here. Yeah, you said we right? Oh here. yeah, we met yeah. here. Yeah. So don't I still get out? Like I'll get in the streets, but like I'm just not going to Philly on like a Sunday just because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, and you're and not, it, like as reckless. Like I'm sure. I, I ride in like D.C. like once or twice a year. I ride in New York. Try to get there like at this point probably once a year. Yeah. I ride with the six one zero riders when they pop out, but uh-huh. like. So you're yeah, done. You they're, think you're they, like you're done with the 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 videos and all that stuff. You ever think you'll come back? I will always like do a video here and there, and I always have a love for it. But I don't think right now my goal is as much video orientated. Right. I've been yeah. like how you said like things got tough. Like I had the kid. One of my good friends has an electric company. I started working with him about a year and a half ago doing okay. electric full time. And I still have to shop. I'm here every day, and uh, as of now. I'm working like four days with him, three days here, plus like overtime here after work. But uh, so you just got different yeah, goals. Now, it's it's like. different goals, and um, I'm trying to learn something that's gonna make me money, there you go. and yeah. still be able to keep my shop and just focus on money. I I would I always consider like pulling the camera out here, but I feel like I'm so busy and I'm always doing so much as it is that yeah. like it's a lot of work to like. I was telling you as you were setting up like. I, I had I had I had the best shit you could get in twenty like seventeen. I had everything I had was the best you could get. Now everything my shit's like outdated. It's like to get the footage four K on my computer takes a whole half a day to get it to the computer, then an overnight to get it on my editing software. Yeah, right. so it's Final just a cut. lot more time consuming yeah. too. Yeah, you gotta go back to the Windows Movie Maker and. Yeah. And I tried After Effects because I always rocked with Final Cut for the longest, but I tried After Effects when I was shooting some music videos, trying to do some crazy effects. Yeah. And it and that that was even harder for me because like it makes you render it as you go. So I got Final Cut still. Okay. But no, like so honestly, it just takes a long time. Yeah, like, I mean it's it's definitely time consuming. I do I commercials, these up, but they're pretty. This is pretty cut and dry. Throw an intro, throw the video, throw the outro. Like, yeah. it's yeah, nothing it's, like. It's kind of minimal editing. Yeah, your videos are like, I've, I've seen them. Like, they're really editing. But yeah, because yeah, I'm, it, oh, I'm like, sure. <laughs> it's like 3 a.m. And like, I'm editing a music video and my boy, he's just like, we're out to like lunch. And he's just like rapping these lyrics to me because he heard them a million times. Because I'm like, to the sound of the beat. Yeah. And like. Everything's like flickering because back, like, before YouTube was popping how it is now, like, really popping, like, I'm talking like earlier stages. I, my whole editing style was like trying to be fast to like keep their attention, yeah, right, right. for sure. So, yeah. That's like, uh, I don't know if you see like Cole Bennett, like, that's like, yeah, his, fuck yeah, that's his, cool. that's his thing. Is my, like, when, when I was heavy in the music videos, really. Ch- when like the the really like good effects were starting to be able to be done by normal people, mm-hmm. my boy Jut told me, uh, 
he was like, because I was actually, I, so I lived at Justin's house in high school, and then I also lived with him right around the time before my mom died. Yeah. Because I got, I got my dog, this pit bull, and my grandpa didn't really fuck with that. <laughs> my grandpa ended up buying a crib in Upper Darby for me to live in because I spent most of high school living at a couple of people's houses. Okay. Yeah. So he had got me that house, but they, they just weren't cool with the dog at first. So I, I was over <coughs> Justin's house, just, you know, editing videos, yeah, same shit. Up, like, the hardest thing, too, with the videos is, like, everybody tries to have their own style. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. some styles just don't work, he, you know what he I mean? Was, he was like, yo, watch Cole Bennett. And that's when I got After Effects, because I was like, you can't really do it as easy on Final yeah. Cut. Some of the stuff he does is crazy. Yeah, is. Um, now, Z was talking about somebody. I don't know. He's more Dude. into the, the yeah, dirt bikes and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So, I don't even Z can ask now, a question. I, I don't remember, even know who it is. I remember last time I was here, we talked a little bit about Brat Vlogs. And I was just curious to see if you still talk to him today. Um, Because I do see that, him on Instagram, and he is going crazy down there. I definitely fuck with Brat. Um, I, as far as, like... I haven't talked to him in some time, but it's not about any reason. It's just the same thing with a lot of people. He's doing his thing, getting some money, taking care of his family. Right. And I'm trying to do the same thing. So. Yeah. I got you. And people you know, he's, yeah. he's, yeah. People you know, but when I see him, it's all, it's fucking what's good with you. Like, how you been? Yeah. Like, I've, I damn near traveled the country with this kid. Like, right. I've been to so many states with him. And, and you were like, and you were riding, recorded, like doing I used the videos to, and stuff like I that. Used with to, him? I used to shoot. I used to shoot vlogs for Fatty when Third Eye Visions was popping. Yeah. Okay. For his little yeah. brother Fatty. Yeah. And they welcomed me straight to their neighborhood, and uh, I really got to know his brother. I got to know him. They put me on to some people that I was doing videos with, and uh, he was always around for the bikes. Like we traveled, we traveled the country on bikes. We used. Me and my guys used to say back on tours like the or back on tour like the motherfucking Beatles. Yeah, <laughs> because that gotta be a good we time. we did Miami from 2015 to 2019 straight every year mansion. Yep, okay. Airbnb. Yeah. I remember watching the video. Mansion. Time. Me and my and um, yeah. and we did we did fucking. Atlanta a couple years in a row. We did D.C. a couple years in a row. We did New Orleans. Drove our motherfucking bikes to New Orleans. D drove our bikes to Atlanta, Miami. Right. Like, when you guys I, go down there, like, are you... People know you? Like, you're you're popping there? Are you, um, like, the new guys on the nah, scene? Nah, like, like, 2015, when we went, people started kind of recognizing my name because of Third Eye Visions. Yeah. But, uh... I don't know. I just don't look at stuff like that. You yeah. know, like for you me, like doing it for fun. Like you weren't worried like, about the clout or nothing. Like, like it was that. just like I was just like, damn, we're all just riding here. Like, like it, I'm with my boys having a time of my life on fucking Collins Ave. Like, yeah, got into some crazy shit, getting chased on scooters. Yeah, like fucking. Uh, it's crazy. I'm call. I'm. I'm fucking. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm fucking on probation, not even allowed out of the state of PA, and uh, I'm down in fucking Miami, popping wheelies Get, and getting videos. getting chased on rental rental 50 cc scooters, <laughs> getting a crazy ass chase. I barely knew how to ride at the time. I've ridden at this point. I've ridden a KX 100 up and down a few times. I was drifting cars. I stopped I stopped driving cars because I was getting in trouble for the cars. So I got into the bikes. I really didn't know how to ride like that. So everybody gets busy. I get fucking caught out front of the hotel right on. It wasn't, or yeah, whatever. I think Collins is the second street and Ocean Drive's the first Ocean street. Drive's I, the first our street. We got chased from Ocean Drive and the hotel was on Collins. I'm fucking sprawled out in the middle of the fucking street. And uh, cops are right there, like, Crash the bike. I'm literally sprawled out like this. Damn. On my chest. And I'm like, damn, I'm done. And a uh, cop comes up to me. And I just fucking bullshitted him. Like, I was like, dude, I got scared. Like, I seen you chasing me. Like, I don't know what the fuck. Like, all those other bikes went the other way. Because he was trying to say we were all recklessly riding. And I was like, 
I don't even know who they are. Like, I'm down here by myself. Yeah. And fucking, I don't know if he just didn't care or what, but I got the fucking bike, and I'm, like, calling B, and this motherfucker's, like, in the bushes of the hotel watching me. Yeah. <laughs> he's making sure the cops still ain't there. Yeah. And I'm calling him, and he's not answering me. Finally, he answers. He's like, yo, they gone? I'm like, yeah, they're gone. Let me the fuck in. <laughs> <laughs> so you got away with it. Yeah, it was so uh, lucky, but that's just pretty, that's pretty much everything. Like in your past, what do you see, like in the future with Fresh Powder? Do you have anything coming down the line with with this, or anything big coming up, or anything you're looking forward to? <sighs> so Fresh Powder, like, I'm I'm building bikes right now. Like, if people have been like tuned into my shit i've really been on like instagram more than anything even though i'm not heavily posting on there but i post a lot on my story yep uh i started doing like some raffles like custom lt80s like full builds yeah i did a harley um i got i got some shit in the works i got a couple more lt80s coming i got a banshee coming and 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 what i was about to tell you um like my boss had said to me he's a good friend of mine but my boss he was like he's like i'm telling him i need to get a day off every week to be here more because i'm not putting as much into here as i need to be and i got my shop i got too many projects at one time i want to get this shit done yeah so because i haven't i haven't like completed a bike and 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 raffled it or given it away and like i haven't finished a bike in close to a year okay which is kind of sad but i've been working the parts are getting done, but the bikes ain't getting built yet. Yeah. Right. But he's like, well, if you got to take off because you got to make some money, if you got money to make. And I was like, well, I don't really have money to make as far as, like, jobs that are there. Yeah. Like, I get jobs all the time, like random jobs. But I was like, I got jobs that I'm making. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm just at the point where I'm like, I'm just going to build a dope-ass bike. I'm going to get the money that it's worth out of it and someone's going to get a dope bike for cheap. Yeah. 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 Now, we'll and and if not, I'm going to just, if not, I'm going to just do a bike up and sell it on Facebook or, yeah. or so fix a bike. So that's what you want to start doing those, like the raffles and, and shit uh, like that more, you think? Just like my own custom stuff. Like yeah. not necessarily raffles, like just my own work. Like gotcha. I'll take any, I'll take most two strokes and make them run if they ain't running. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So even if it's not a fresh powder full build, like I could just buy a bike and put a top end in it or do whatever it needs to do to make it run. Yeah, right. no, for sure. That's a but just so on the more on the side because now I'm on the books and I got a job, like more so a career to where my family will be cool in thirty years. Yeah, right. like yeah. for sure. Like it's only been a year and a half and I'm already making significantly more than I started with. Yeah, right. he's offering to send me to school, not to go there and not know what the fuck I'm doing. I've been working in a factory almost seven days a week for the past year and a half. Okay. So if I go to school, I just need this certificate. Yep. Because right. I already know how to do it. Yeah. No, that's dope. And so and and and, and, yeah. and helping him grow his company. So we can all make money and at the same time learning what I need to learn so I can do it on my own as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't ever plan on really leaving him, but I, I also still do side jobs. I'm all, and stuff I'm all, like yeah, that. I'm gonna do side jobs and I'm gonna I'm gonna do my thing at my shop and maintain this as no, long as I can. That's awesome. Any raffles that come up, like I said, I mean I'll repost stuff. Yeah. We'll re- repost stuff on that. the Instagram. Yeah. Uh, where can everybody find you at on Instagram? <laughs> Really, I'm just I'm just like at J ninety three nasty. Okay. And um I got the fresh powder dot official page, the original fresh powder page, uh, the password got lost on it. But I reposted I spent six months reposting every post because for the most part my fresh powder is is where I have all my stuff that yeah. I've done yeah. in one spot. Okay. So we'll put everything in the bio and everything like that. I haven't I haven't been posting on Fresh Powder a lot because a lot of the work I'm doing is bikes that are being built. So if you're seeing it, it's gonna be like on my story real quick because like I'm not trying to put out there what I got cooking really because they're surprise. Yeah, like there's less anticipation when they've seen it the whole time, but when I pop up with some shit Everyone's going to be looking yeah. because this ain't the same stuff you're seeing. I appreciate and, everyone. Um, 
Z had well, one thing that well, he ta- told me about. I don't know what well, it is, but he wanted to ask you this. Will we be seeing the SS Nasty in commission this year? Yeah, SS Nasty. Ooh. <laughs> you saw her out there? This oh, is, I saw this her is, out We there. haven't came up with a definite name because uh, 2019 was all about the big wins only. That was before the cops shut me down. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, the, that's actually, that's like technically the SS Nasty too. Oh, okay. So we got... We got, uh, it's either like the SS Nasty 2, the SS Nasty Er, <laughs> or or because it's a four win. So, and I was what just is gonna, this SS Nasty? Because he told me about it, but I don't know. People aren't going to know what it is. Yeah. What's yeah, the SS Nasty? The SS Nasty was the original boat that got bought from VJ Cycle, my boy. Okay. Sold me this haggard ass boat. <laughs> best boat. Probably the best boat out of the two that I've owned. Probably the best one I've ever had. But, uh, she was. Yeah, the SS Nasty, it was a it was a half green, half lime green, half black, loud ass system, uh, little like sunroof top, and we used to just get rowdy on it like we used to wild coronas, shooting the coronas with the BB gun. Uh-huh. Uh fucking just like ramping off tugboat waves. Getting stuck in getting stuck in some thunder getting, some thund- getting stuck in some thunderstorms. Uh got my boys fucking uh with red solo cups trying to like empty my thing because i don't got a bilge pump in there right. too much water yeah in i abandoned down. i abandoned shit the one time <laughs> yeah yeah because because when me and when me and my boy jut were like 18 and he still tries to clown me on this and say it's not true but on some real shit we got stuck in a thunderstorm and we were at the swim club and they kicked everyone out and we didn't have a way home we walked across these trestles. It turned out to be like a crazy hurricane. And we, we like crossed these trestles. Tree branches are falling and shit. We get to this like little hut. And we're at the hut next to the baseball field. And a fucking, it was like hailing sideways. And we're fucking setting up this table to try to block the hail from hitting us in the ankles. Mm-hmm. A fucking lightning bolt struck like 20 feet from us. Shit put me on my ass. They were trying to say I was just bugging. <laughs> I was fucking my one ear was ringing for three days and I couldn't feel my left two fingers my whole left arm my whole left side of my body for like three days that's crazy I don't know like they like they were standing like farther from me yeah you were right next to the and, lightning bolt but, but I was on cement but, but the cement had water on it so I don't know if it was I don't know what it you was I don't fuck with lightning <laughs> so when we got stuck in, you know where the cove's at in Jersey you don't really be on the Delaware River nah. but we were down at the cove at this uh, golf course and it started lightning in, and I'm not with that yeah. my guys know that I told my man Vitelli I said you're the captain now he's trying to <laughs> fucking hold the umbrella over my head while there's a lightning storm while, my, while the bull Bennett is trying to get the uh, the, water the water out, out. the fucking boat. <laughs> nah, I ran right on the land. We might have to break That's that it, into right? commission this summer. But or I was thinking because it's a four wins, the more wins. Oh, the more okay. wins. Oh, that's, that's, the SS Nasty Four might just have to stay because that's that's its own thing. Out of yeah, commission. Yeah, that's yeah. a serious vessel right there. Yeah. We'll see if we break that out in the summer. But no, like I said, we'll repost everything that, that you're sharing. If there's any raffles, anything like that. Appreciate everything that, with fresh for powder, sure. Yeah. We'll put everything in the bio. Oh, I appreciate you coming on, man. Hopefully, we, yeah, we get you in another one for sure yeah, down the without road. Without a doubt, and, I appreciate you guys for coming out here. And, and it's been fun. Anything you got, like I said, post it. We'll repost it, and we'll go yeah. from there. Appreciate you it's guys. the growing Thank pains. You. Yes, yes, sir. sir.